Are you tired of spending your time and money chasing strategy after strategy only to discover what worked 10, 5, or even 2 years ago is not working now? Things shift fast in the online space, and if you're not keeping up, you're getting left behind. It's time for something different. Welcome to the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast, where every single episode will be jam-packed with proven, profitable strategies, behind-the-scenes secrets, and what's working now resources. From industry experts and global influencers to help you scale your business, shorten your learning curve, and stand out in a crowded, noisy marketplace. And now, your host, award-winning marketing and media strategist and international speaker, Patty Farmer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Marketing Media Money Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Farmer, and I'm really looking forward to sharing today's industry expert with you. And today we actually have a returning guest. She had so much to say and so much to share. We just had to bring her back again. And to tell you the truth, we probably won't get it all in this episode either, because she just has so much brilliance to share. You better have your shades on. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest today. Today we have with us Tamra Burkett, and she is a CRM consultant, a virtual meeting producer, author, speaker, and entrepreneur. She fully believes in the power of personal connection to motivate, inspire, and educate. She helps companies squeeze every penny of profitability and service out of their current CRM. Tamara knows that authentic relationships are the lifeblood of a thriving business, and she also understands that nurturing those relationships in a meaningful way requires both a personal touch and the proper technology. Through her consulting and training company, Tamara helps entrepreneurs and small business owners identify and onboard the system best suited to help them scale their business. And using the results of her signature five-point personalized assessment, Tamra's clients are able to quickly automate their back-end system and start working on what matters. And we know that's what it's all about, technology and relationships. So this is going to be a great conversation. So thank you so much, Tamra, for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, it's always so excited when I get to share you with my audience. So really, what I want to start with really for you is we could go in a lot of direction, Mm -hmm. but I really think it is really important to start with really the journey because you didn't just Mm -hmm. wake up one day and say, you know what, I think I'm going to be an agnostic CRM consultant, right? You know, so there was definitely a journey and, you know, I've known you for, oh, I don't even know how many years now. And you're Mm -hmm. my go-to, you know, CRM consultant that I tell everybody about, but I think it's more than that. I think for me, the intersection of technology and relationships is Mm -hmm. key. And you are literally the person that can really talk about this. But how did Mm -hmm. you get there? Because like I said, you didn't just wake up one day and decide to do this. There's always a journey. So why don't you tell us Mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, on how that transpired for you? Sure. So my background, my career was in nonprofit. And so I always had this overview of relationships and how important they are in our lives and, and how you treat people and, and how they treat you. It really impacts the way you feel, behave, think. It impacts your performance and even what you achieve. So I was very aware of that early on in life. And I started my career in nonprofit and, you know, spent over 14 years there. And really at that point, I believed I can have the best or the biggest impact in the business world, right? How do I transform lives and and just build a better world for other people? And so I started uh, my business in uh, consulting for customer retention, customer loyalty. And during that time, as my business began to pick up, one, I needed some type of tool to assist me in managing my relationship 
And my clients needed a tool to help them execute our plans we created. So it's it was through that process that, you know, a lot of pain and onboarding, I think I done onboarded like a dozen CRMs in a year. <laughs> wow. And just going through that process and I had those questions of, okay, how do I find the right CRM? And it was just this whole different world, different language. And there was this huge disconnect in terms of my business and how I manage relationships and how I connect with people versus this CRM and the software and how it operated. It was this huge missing gap. So I truly worked hard in figuring out what's that formula of questions to ask. What should I look for how do I want to use it? How do I process information, right? So that was a, a very interesting journey that by the time I figured it out for myself and my clients, I had people ask me if I can do it for them. And so that's how I kind of transitioned from focusing on client retention to really focusing on this CRM journey because everyone has an issue with their CRM, whether is to find the right one, if it's to use what they have, or if it's to figure out, you know, how to increase their habitual use of it. Like, how do you leverage it and make the most of what you have? That makes a lot of sense. And I know that really, when we're talking about marrying tech with relationships, Mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm sure you probably get asked, (laughs) which is why I'm asking you, right, which is really that we all know that building relationships is really built on trust. It's really like the know, like, and trust factor, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you use tech to build trust? Are there some, maybe some ways that you can talk to us about that? Sure. Well, when you think about all the components going into establishing trust with someone, right? It's first and foremost, are you, will that person do what they promised? right? So a part of that has to do with consistency, right? Right. So your technology helps you, assist you in being consistent, right? It helps you to remind you of your promises, or at least you can set it up in that way, is the first piece is being consistent, making sure you're there when you say you'll be there, and deliver those pieces or deliverables you said you would. Right. So it helps you in that piece. The other piece is just the overall communication, right? The preference of communication. So technology can help you if someone prefers to do the texting and the chatting in that regard. Now you have those abilities to fulfill that. And sometimes you can even automate it. So that's even better. Yeah, that's even better. Those conversations or those uh, touch points that are standard across different relationships or at certain stages, it's the same no matter who you're communicating with, you can automate those pieces. So you can reach out and communicate with people the way they want to be communicated with. You can, you know, increase your consistency, you know, and those are just two of those pieces. And then you can also reach out to people more often. You can increase the frequency, right? With it not being more time on your behalf to do it. Again, with the automation piece, you can do that as well. So all those things really help you to build trust and just amplify who you are. It's not about technology necessarily doing everything for you. Because if you have a bad process, technology is only going to amplify it. It's not going to fix it. But it should amplify all the good characteristics and services of you and your business. Really make you shine. That's what technology should do. And they should make it easier for you. I really like that because, you know, I believe and have seen it happen over and over and over. Of course, that's why I Mm -hmm. believe it. Which is how many times, you know, to the audience, really, I'm really talking to them. Like, how many times have you had this great conversation? So whether that is somebody that you met or whether somebody introduced them, 
to you or you met them through an organization you're a part of, whatever the reason is that made it so that you either get on Zoom or get on phone and you have this amazing conversation, right? And in right. that amazing conversation, right, mm -hmm. you decide that there's things you're going to do for each other, right? right. And I like to call those deliverables, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I got to tell you, I have seen it over and over again where I have had an amazing conversation and these are the things that I said I would do and I do them. And then the person who said that they would do certain things, they don't, they fall and they don't do it. And all of a sudden, like this whole amazing conversation that you had that you thought, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then they don't do it. It's kind of like they blew everything. Like, why did they even bother getting on that call? And I don't believe that people do it necessarily because they didn't mean to follow up in what they said. Mm -hmm. you know, time got in the way, all these different things happened and that's why they didn't do it. But it mm -hmm. does undo a lot when they don't follow through with the deliverables they say. Yeah. So, you know, are there ways where technology can actually help you with that? Because now you've moved on and you're checked the boxes and thought that was great. And, you know, you've emailed them back and said, thank you for what they said. And then you don't even realize that, oh, wow, I didn't do what I said I was going to do. Right. Yeah. Right. So absolutely, technology can assist you in that. And I say for first and foremost for people, and it's happened to me too, sometimes you can get busy and you have like five or six Zoom calls in a day. Some people have 10 of those Zoom calls in a day. And it boggles my mind that people would, would schedule 10 calls in a day because more than it's really transactional. How can you build relationships where you just have these conversations back to back to back to back to back? Because you need time. One is to allow yourself the time to actually take the notes and do whatever it is you need to do to enter that information in a system or somewhere to capture that piece, to capture what your deliverables are, you know, confirm what you've done. Uh, so that's one piece is building out that process. And sometimes it's almost like how fish fish don't know they're swimming in water. They can't see it, right? And a lot of times it's the same with us is we go through the motions, but we don't take the time to step back and deconstruct what we're doing and what we'd like to do. What's the root of those issues? And so it's, okay, I have to enter notes. What's the quickest way for me to enter notes and for me to adjust and enter in all that information so that I do, I deliver on my promise and I can move on to the next meeting and be in the moment and be intentional about that connection. So technology can help you with, okay, storing the notes. Where do you store the notes? How do you store it, right? Are you typing it in? You know, how long does it take you? I'm not a fast typer. I'll be the first to admit, like that is one thing that'll slow me down. So I have to find a tool to help me with speeding up that process. Right. And you can find tools that can do that for you. That's really important, too, because I only type like 40 words a minute. So right. um, I got to say, I have always said if I could type as fast as I could talk, woo, it would be fabulous. Right. But right. But, you know, it is really important. So mm -hmm. what would you say about how would you align? I mean, there's a lot of tech out there. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like everything else, we all have a lot of, you know, beliefs, whether they're limiting beliefs or not. There are beliefs. Right. We also have values, what we believe, right? How do we align tech usage with those? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I know I struggled with that from time to time of, okay, what do I want to be known for? Who do I say I am? What do I value in my business, right? Mm -hmm. And how do I make sure I'm demonstrating that with every connection I'm building, right? I'm not going to be perfect. None of us are. We can do our best to master these things. But how can I align that piece? And so the best way to describe it is to give you an example of my philosophy and my branding and what I hope I am portraying and demonstrating when I'm connecting with people. So yes, my business talks about technology, but it's under the premise and the understanding that relationships is at the center of everything I do, right? 
So that means when I go to market and promote myself, how do I do it in a way that relationships stay at the core of my message, right? So a lot of times, yeah, we can talk about graphics and how that looks, but it's how am I promoting? Am I doing paid promotion or versus organic? Well, if I'm talking about relationships, um, that's more long-term. So it's better for me to look at organic reach. Okay, now I'm looking at organic, even within social media platforms, how do I do that, right? Again, I'm about relationships and I'm a small business, so it's best for me to build partnerships and celebrate those people in my community and market that way to provide resources for my network and in turn have them reciprocate that and have my partners promote me, have them speak for me because word of mouth is still the best form of advertising, right? Again, I create services. I offer services. So being relational is all in alignment of the things of what I provide, how I market, all those things. And it also goes to how I follow up, how I reach out. If you look at my LinkedIn profile, my headline is a quote. And if you read, and if you go to my LinkedIn summary, I share a story, a personal story about myself and my engagement, my interaction with my mother and all these things that are personal, I want to build relationships, right? So what would be the opposite? It would be something that really focused more on the services that I provided of how great I, speaking up my services and myself as if it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, that works for some industries and some people, that doesn't work for me. Because again, the core of my business is all about relationships. So it really does depend on that. And I work with CRMs in the same way. I lay out my process. I have a list of questions I ask. I want to know about somebody's background. How do they come into their business and the services they provide? And how do they view their staff, their employees, or the clients they serve? If it's more transactional, then that doesn't fit, right? So that every part a lot of my sense. Business. Yeah. And so you can find technology to help support that. I have a scheduler that asks questions as well so I can get to know that person and we can have it, a good conversation, a meaningful conversation in a short amount of time. I think that's good because then you can focus on the things that matter. But thinking about questions, and I love questions, and I'm a firm believer that if you ask better questions, you'll get better answers, right? So mm -hmm. I think that is really important. So what would you say are a few questions that people should ask themselves before they choose a CRM? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, so the first question is to identify what challenge or series of challenges you want to solve or need support with your CRM tool. And so there are three overall categories you should look at when it comes to your business. One is business operations. So on a daily basis, what are your processes? What are the administrative tasks that are just driving you crazy? Like if you can just get this right or have something to handle this part, it'll just make your day so much easier. So look at the administrative pieces. The second area will be your sales process. That includes follow-up. That's follow-up is sales right? So looking at that piece, what do you need assistance in to make the sales process easier, quicker, like more efficient, and then effective, actually helping you to win more sales? And then the third piece will be your marketing. Do you need just more, more visibility? And even in that, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, a way to capture leads. A lot of people talk about lead generation, right? So what does that mean for your business? Because not every business function well with funnels, but you can have like newsletters and notifications about blogs, right? So really understanding your marketing piece and what's lacking. 
And so look through all those areas and then based on that, you'll know what type of CRM that you're looking for. And that can narrow the field because there are like over a thousand out there now. I know before it was hundreds, but now it's thousands. So that can help you sift through and eliminate hundreds of different CRMs right away. Well, I love that. So with that said, though, what would you say are some of the non-negotiable, right? So when you're thinking about this, you know, there's always negotiables and then there's non-negotiables, right? Right. So what would you say are some of the non-negotiables people need to know about? Right. So there are two right away that is just like non-negotiable. They're deal breakers. And one will be the integration capability. Uh, so a lot of people think about or want this this one system that does it all, and it sounds so great in theory. It may even, you can even picture it working well in your mind, but in reality, when rubber meets the road, it can be a disaster, <laughs> right? Because, right. <laughs> because not every function is configured well, and it's, you know, it's like, redoing your kitchen or your bathroom, right? And buying the appliances. There are certain appliances or brands that create really great or build really great appliances like your refrigerator, you do sub-zero, but who's to say that you're gonna get a sub-zero stove, right? Mm, Not really. And you may not need top of the line stove. You just may need something that just is decent. So that's the same way you can think of your CRM and the different tools that you need. You don't necessarily need everything all in one. You just need them all to work well and to integrate, to talk to each other. So that's a deal breaker is integration. Another thing that can be, that's a deal breaker is their customer support. That is so vital because you will have questions. What do they have to support you when you have those questions, when you have challenges and you need to reach out? Uh, for some people, they just need to know have a knowledge base where they can go look it up and read it and, and it can go based on that. Some people need that and video. Some people need all three. They need the knowledge base, they need videos, and they want to be able to get on the phone with somebody. I'm one of those people, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the support matters. Integration matters as well. I think that makes a lot of sense. So you just alluded earlier that there used to be hundreds and now there's could be over a thousand of CRMs, Mm -hmm. right? And I know that you refer to yourself as an agnostic CRM consultant. So for those out there who may not know what that actually really means in reference to what you do, Mm -hmm. um, could you please define that for them? Sure. So I don't have a preference in software. I'm not affiliated with any CRM software company in the extent that they're paying me for staring clients or customers their way. So it really is about the business owner or operator I serve and about what's best for them. I love that. I love it a lot, as a matter of fact, because I think it is really important when people really understand. I mean, we live in a world where there's a lot of affiliate marketing going on and stuff. And while I don't think there's anything wrong with affiliate marketing, I'm more relationship-based like you are. So I don't always use affiliate marketing, but I do believe that as long as there's full disclosure and you're using it correctly and for the right reasons and stuff, but I do believe that there are a time and a place that people do need to know where you stand So it's really important when they're making their decision. And I think that's pretty much like an integrity issue. And I've always really loved, admired your integrity and how you show up. So I just want to say that for sure. But then with all these hundreds of CRMs that are out there, right? Mm -hmm. So for those who didn't know you that this is what you do and Mm -hmm. you could be available for them, right? But how would they know if they have the right one? I mean, are there some certain things like they would be able to say, oh, with all of the ones out there, I would know I have the right one if. Okay, that's a great question. And so this whole idea of flow, uh, I have a client and I asked him, I said, you know, what's the goal for you? He said, the goal for me is to be able to 
jump out of bed an hour early and just motivated and ready to work. That's my goal. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I was like, yeah, your CRM is a tool. And just like a professional chef who loves to cook, they love their knives. You should love your CRM uh, and how you can tell that you have the right CRM and that you love your CRM is one, the ease and the peace of mind it brings you, right? So, and you feel in control of your sales pipeline. You know exactly where your leads are. You know exactly what stage your leads are in. You can forecast the amount of money coming in by quarter or whatnot. Uh, It just makes that whole piece run so smooth and easy. It almost feels like, I can't say it it feels like you're not working, but it's just, there's just this element of naturalness to how you're communicating with people. There's flow, truly. That's when you know you have a good CRM. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about CRMs, I believe that in every industry, I don't care what someone's industry is, There are always these myths, right, of things that people believe for whatever reason, whether it is something somebody told them, whether it's something they've been hearing for years and years and they just haven't changed their opinion, for whatever reason, they have these myths. What would you say is a myth that surrounds CRMs that you would love to be able to dispel? Oh, if I can talk all day about this. Okay, so (laughs) so one myth people believe is that CRM systems are for managing their clients and their Hmm. prospects and that's it. And CRMs can and should help you to manage your client relationships. But there are other relationships that we need as business owner um, that's vital to the success of our business, right? So, you know, you and I, we talk about having partners, collaboration partners, venture partners, vendors, you know, there are a pool of people we need in our network. And it's important to be able to manage those too. It's not just about clients. It's not just about prospects. It's about your referral partners. It's about vendors, potential vendors. You want to be able to really have be able to manage your support system within your CRM. Because if it goes by the wayside, there's nothing, well, I shouldn't say nothing works, but it's, if you were to hire the wrong person, (laughs) that's money wasted, right? On a vendor, you didn't know, came recommended, or you look in the paper and you didn't, you didn't already have that relationship with that person, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's definitely one myth. Another myth is this whole concept as this one size fits all with CRMs. And just because somebody is crushing their goals and they love their CRM does not mean it'll do the same for you. So it's really important to understand that CRMs, different CRMs, they do different things. And that's why it's really important for you to understand what your business challenges are and how you want your CRM to address them. Those are some good ones. <laughs> and I, we could almost do a show about this because I have to tell you, I think myths are just so important, but kind of on that note, but a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Tomer, if you could go back to when you were really starting your business, your entrepreneurial journey, mm-hmm. what do you wish that you had known when you first started out You know now, but you wish you would have known it then. Oh, goodness. It's really important to stick to the commitments you make for yourself. Uh, Good one. Yeah. I mean, you know, we talk about how do you build confidence and self-esteem and all this and purpose. And, you know, it's, it's important for you to protect yourself, right? And part of protecting yourself and loving yourself is to stick to the commitments you make. So if that is, I'm going for a walk in the mornings at five o'clock or whatnot, that means you get your tail up and you go for that walk. Right. <laughs> right. I wish I would have known that early on. 
Absolutely, because I think those are the things that are really important. Those are kind of the non-negotiables for ourselves, right? right. And I think that is really important because a lot of times we don't take care of those things when we get busy, and that is really, really important. So, Tamara, what Absolutely. would you say is one of the biggest obstacles, blind spot, or a roadblock that you had to overcome mm -hmm. in your business? Oh, my goodness. I had a lot of blind spots. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> um, so I just start off by saying I'm the type of person that is used to just jumping into something head first and figuring it out along the way. <laughs> and that could really break your business. <laughs> you have to have temperance when it comes to your business. And that's a blind spot for me. Or just to think that, oh, I can do it myself. Truly understanding how much money and time I'm just giving up and throwing away because I want to do it myself. Oh, yeah. It always right? costs us when we do that. <laughs> it always costs. And it's only in, within the last, I'll say, 18 months that I realized how much is costing me. And the reason why I think I've realized that is because I hired a professional, I hired an expert, they did an amazing job for me in maybe a quarter or an eighth of the time that it would have taken me to do it, right? Right. And when I you think have, that is yeah. important. It's important. I always like to say, stop licking your own envelope, right? Yeah. <laughs> work in your brilliance and hire others to work in theirs. That's yeah. really the name of the game. Absolutely. So, Tom, what's the best compliment you've ever received from a client? <laughs> I'm sure you've received many, <laughs> many. Yeah. So, actually, I take this as a compliment because I'm just as excited and for my client. I, I have a client who is a franchise consultant, and she just shared with me yesterday that she ranked the top consultant last month it was announced today and i was just so overjoyed and happy for her and i i took that as a compliment because i knew how much work and how long we worked with each other and just all the struggles that she had to overcome to get to that point so like to me i feel like that's the biggest compliment i have a feeling that's not what you're looking for <laughs> no i i think that is really a it really is a great compliment you know i think a lot of times you know ROI does isn't just, you know, you hire someone and two weeks later, you know, they say, oh, wow, I got, you know, 10x what I paid you. I mean, it'd be great if it was always that, but it's not. A lot of it is just getting clarity. So where are you spending your time and your money that it didn't need to be that somebody was able to help you with that? Sometimes it is really being able to be positioned better or, you know, the strategies need to be changed and stuff though. So I really feel like you know, the best ROI someone ever gets is when they invest in themselves. And a lot of that is by hiring someone, the right someone who can help them get where they need to go faster, right? Mm -hmm. And so I know that when you're talking about hiring a CRM consultant and somebody who really gets the relationships mm -hmm. and really understands how to use technology, like you're our girl, right? You're the person mm -hmm. that we really want to have in our corner. That's why I tell everybody about you. And that's why you're really here today. So what do you, Tamara, love the most about your business today? You know, I know that you could ask me on a, any day and it could change, right? It's not mm -hmm. always the same, but today, mm -hmm. what do you love the most about your business? Oh, I truly love educating people. I love that building the awareness and being able to work with somebody like hands on to show them because you know knowledge is only as good as you can execute it as you can implement it right and i always know that there's always that problem with execution i can i love to learn right and a lot of people do but there's this gap between like learning knowing and doing oh yeah that, like we all need help in and it's crm is difficult for people it's i tell people yeah i know it's not sexy it's not it's not but at the same time being able to deal with those small details and develop 
a deeper understanding of what you're doing, why you're doing it, what should be the impact when you're more intentional about what you're doing and you're designing these experiences. Once you have it and it's paying off, I mean, I can't, I don't know anything that's better than that feeling that, oh my goodness, it's working and it's working how I want it to. And I'm making these connections and my business is improving. That's what I love. I love that. I also want to say that one of the things I love is how you are showing up and how you're showing up everywhere, right? You know, how I'm seeing you on social media. I love how I am, you know, listening to you on podcasts. I love how I love how you're writing for my magazine, Marketing Media Money. I love how you are doing that and really sharing. You know, you're the only person who is having a column for two years in a row because our readers love you. They love how you're showing up. They love the content that you're sharing. They love your giving heart. And I love that, right? You know, and so I think that is really great. So what's next for you? Is there a project you're working on? What is next for you? Yeah, that's a great question. So I am in the midst of creating a training program to teach people how to find the right CRM for their needs. So, you know, people, no matter what type of cash flow or of finances, you should be able to get what you need, right? With or without me. So I'm building that DIY program and that should be out soon. So that's the first major project I'm working on. And then I have some other things up my sleeve as technology um, and virtual events continue to grow and advance. It's, you know, figuring out that piece that you could add more engagement and more tools and toys. So that's fun. That That's a project I'm working on as well. I love that. So Tamara, how can my audience connect with you? Sure. Well, they can always go to my website. It's my name. It's TamaraBurkett.com. I'm also very engaged on LinkedIn. So that's two places to catch me. Perfect. And you came bearing gifts as well. So I love that you actually have a gift for the audience. I'm going to tell you right now, I love it so much that I'm doing something that you talk about all the time. We're having a little happy dance here. You know, one (laughs) of the things that you always like to say is you help people get more happy dance moments. And I love that. So why don't you tell them a little bit about the gift that you have for them? Sure. So, you know, a lot of us, uh, we engage in networking as a way to, you know, build our partners and potential clients. And so one piece with networking is really understanding how to develop a process. So you're connecting with the right people and you're following up with them consistently and being able to identify where are those areas or those gaps in your networking process, especially if you're not seeing a, an ROI. Uh, So I have this four-minute assessment uh, called Networking IQ uh, that you can take, and it'll help you identify where you have your gaps and if, you know, wherever you want to start to improve, just taking one or two of those pieces will definitely improve networking and increase your revenue. So I have that as a gift for people to take. I love that. And for those of you that are listening, you can just look below. In the show notes, we have the link for you to be able to receive that. And lastly here, I am so excited because this is the portion of the show, which I like to call hashtag open mic, where I turn the mic over to our guest. And you have already shared so much and I appreciate it so much. But this is where we like to tell our audience that we like to wrap up with what is your number one marketing, media, and money strategy? Okay. Yay. So this is a juicy one because I've been using this lately and we kind of talked about it a little earlier on in the podcast. So, uh, you know, I admit I'm not a fast typer. Uh, I prefer to speak or, you know, talk out some of the, you know, process, how I process information, all that good stuff. Uh, so I use, and I strongly suggest for people who are the same way, really, you know, not a quick typer, to use the talk to text feature on your mobile phone to enter in your notes. 
that is a hack that I absolutely love. Every time I finish a conversation, no matter if it's with my coach or with my clients, I go straight to my mobile CRM app and I click on that talk to text button and I just talk out all the things that we spoke of to summarize. And it's done in a matter of minutes, less than five minutes. And then I can go on to the next task. And it's just, it's saved me so much time that I, I just want to share it with the world. So please use the talk to text if you are a slow typer or just writing notes is, is really time consuming for you. I love that. So thank you so much, Tomer, for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. You were so generous with your zone of genius as usual. Well, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. And I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, the Exacta Corporation, developer of the Family Organizer Plus platform. And for more information, check them out at exactacorp.com. You're going to want to do it. Have some amazing stuff. You will find a lot of great information about them and why we chose to have them as our sponsor. And I want to thank you, the listener, for joining us on the Marketing Media Money Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe and review the podcast on your favorite listening platform. Make it a phenomenal day. And remember, if today is not phenomenal, you have the power to change it. We'll see you the next time. Make sure to grab your copy of the Marketing Media Money magazine as well at marketingmediamoney.com. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining us today on the Marketing, Media, and Money podcast. To shorten your learning curve even more, make sure to grab your free copy of the Marketing, Media, and Money magazine at www.marketingmediamoney.com. I promise your business will thank you.